Assumptions of Utility Approach of Consumers Equilibrium Now in the last couple of videos we have discussed how the utility derived by a consumer from consumptions of goods can be used to find out whether or not he is in equilibrium. Now in order to use this approach there are certain fundamental assumptions and I would categorize them into four broad categories. which are relevant in the sense that if we do not take these assumptions then you cannot use the utility approach okay so the first one amongst these four which is there is that the income of consumer in order to apply the utility approach it is very important that the income of the consumer should be given what does this mean? This basically means that if you don't know the income of the consumer, then you cannot ever say whether he is in equilibrium or not. So a rich person who is earning let's say $1 million a year, okay, the amount of money he will be spending on food to be in equilibrium will be much high. Right? Whereas for the poor guy who is there, even a hundred thousand will be too good a money and therefore the amount he'll be spending on food will obviously be much lesser than what this guy might be spending right so it's very important that the income of the consumer is known otherwise we will never know when he's in equilibrium the point of equilibrium of a person with different sets of income is going to be different Therefore, in order to see the utility approach in respect of a particular person, the income of the consumer has to be given. Right? Similar is the case with the price of goods and services. Obviously, once you know the income, you also need to know the price of goods and services. Okay? they have to be known and at the same time they have to remain constant. The first reason is they should be known. Why? If the prices are not known, how will this person allocate the money to various goods or services? Right? So in order to take that decision what money needs to be allocated, the price of the goods and services that this person is interested in should be known. And the second thing is they should remain constant. Why? Because we saw in most of these cases, let's say for example when we took the cup of T1, T2 and T3. So if because of the reason that the T1 which we took in our example, let's say a guy has three cups of tea starting in morning, afternoon and evening and he lives in a very cold place. Okay? If the price of cup of tea in the morning is 100, in the afternoon it's 20 and in the evening it's 50 you can't compare the marginal utility between these three why obviously if he spends 100 he can get five cups here or two cups here right which may not be required right therefore the prices have to remain constant if they are not constant if they are moving constantly between the consumption stages then the utility obviously goes up or down I mean, you'll be very happy to pay 150 bucks for a movie, right? But if someone asks you 1500, you may not enjoy it. Why? Because you are too focused on the price that you've paid for it. The quality of the movie may remain the same in 150 and 1500. But unless and until you get some additional comfort, you will not enjoy this much as you might have enjoyed this. So the prices have to remain constant. Third is that this is the most important so be careful utility can be cardinally measured what does this mean in all our examples that we were taking we said that we are deriving x number of units of utility y number of utility 40 100 80 the assumption is that the utility can be measured if it cannot be measured it cannot be measured then what will happen is we can't apply the utility approach because what we do is we say okay we've got 40 units of utility with this 
and 60 units of utility with this. So obviously the utility is higher here. In the first consumption, maybe I got 100 utilities, right? Therefore, we say that this goes down. If you can't measure what's the amount of utility you get, then you can't apply the utility approach. And the last one, the fourth one is that the money has constant marginal utility. Now what does this mean? Again, what it means is that the value of this money should remain unchanged. What does this mean? Let's say for example, if in 1992 you went out and you bought gold, that would have costed you 5000. Today in 2012, the same amount will cost you maybe 500,000, right? So with the same amount of money, you cannot buy the same quantity of gold. The value of money itself has changed. So as you switch between your consumptions, calculating utility, the value of money has to remain constant. So these were the four assumptions of utility approach to the consumer's equilibrium. If you like this video, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe us or visit us on www.iadubook.com written on the right hand top corner to watch more than 1500 plus video lectures which are free to anyone and everyone and shall always be free to spread the cause of free education.